high mileage cars now i personally like them but it is potentially a bit of a mistake buying a high mileage car now those that watched my previous video on sunday would have seen that i just had this bmw x5 come in you'll know that it's done focus i'm focusing on the wheel because the wheel is curved and it is going to be getting refurbed or they are going to be getting refurbed in this video so if you want to see this car with freshly refurbed wheels stay to the end of the video but yeah it's done 193,000 miles i think uh so through my eyes i'd say that's a lot of miles some people are like that's nothing i've seen cars do 500,000 miles but do you know what through most people's eyes yeah a hundred thousand plus is um, sort of danger zone so we're gonna do a video today talking about high mileage cars the risk when buying high mileage cars and i'm gonna give you my opinion on buying a high mileage car oh my god it's, it's gonna rain it's gonna rain it's like every time i film a video at the minute uh the rain just wants to attack me but it's quite good for the dust on the cars because yeah they're so bloody dusty let's quickly film cinematics Before we talk about the X5, let's have a look at a couple of high mileage cars that we've got in stock. So look, this one, yeah, that wear on the seat is quite bad, but it would be, do you know why? Because it's done 205,000 miles. Now, again, I would say that's quite a lot of miles. So uh, we've got this BW Transporter over here. Nice Passat R-Line just come in there. Just arrived, nice. Uh, let's look at the mileage on this. Look, this is tidy though, man. This is, look at that. Very nice, does need a valet. Ignore the dirt, it's done. Dum, dum, dum. Oh no, it's one of them ones which my camera can't see the screen for some reason, but it has done 199, it's coming from this angle. 199,000, nah, it's not having none of it. 199,000 miles, which is, again, I would say quite high. Let's get this steering cover off, see if it's covering up any horrendous horror stories. No, I think that's all right. That's actually quite good. Like them handles always seem to break on transports, don't they? What is that all about? Oh, here's another wonderful high mileage example. Just come in part exchange, look. <laughs> uh, steering wheel, yeah, look, we're on steering wheel. Look at this, look at it. It was a builder, he basically used it as his builder's van. Look, look at that, it's obviously had bricks on the back seats there. This car's done, oh, you can't even see it again, can you? Can you see that? Yes, you can, 200 and 13,000 miles, absolute mess. No idea what we're gonna do that, probably scrap it, cause uh, yeah, I think it's somewhere near the end of its life now. But yeah, obviously low mileage is uh, preferred. There's no doubt about it. People prefer a low mileage car. And if I've ever got a low mileage car in stock, like exceptional low mileage, like the wonderful Corsa uh, that we had in a video last week, they do sell really well. So let's now go back to the X5. The X5, so yeah, this car, uh, like I say, it's done 193,000 miles. Uh, the wheels do need refurbing, and like I say, I'm gonna be getting that done in today's video. I wanted to film a quick video on it before it goes off to get the wheels done, because uh, I've been daily driving this. Last few days I've been driving it, and I do really, really like it. And now the reason why I wanna do a video on this car is because you get the odd car that is quite exceptional. I say exceptional, it ain't exceptional. It's just a really good car considering the mileage. Now, I am not gonna stand here and say this is better than a, a car that's done 50,000 miles because it's obviously not there's no doubting or no getting away from the fact that this car like all the ball joints are worn the bearings are worn you know the car is worn to the level of 190 odd thousand miles but considering the mileage is actually really nice now even if you hop on the inside now I did just give the car a little wipe down but it ain't it ain't perfect so if you want to see this car looking a bit better than it is right now. Um, we did do a video valid in it. Go and check that out. If you didn't already, that went up on Sunday, just gone. Uh, where on the interior? Let's just turn that off. So we're not interrupted with the sounds of Jay-Z. Uh, yeah, the wear on the interior ain't too bad at all. Now, I know, obviously, in Sunday's video, a lot of people would have already seen this, but for those that didn't see it, uh, I am talking about the same sort of stuff again, but I am quite impressed that, you know, that ain't too bad. That is literally the only sign of wear on this whole car. The steering wheel's really good. It's all nice and clean in here. Like I said, I've been daily driving it. There's the old mints in there. Um, there's no sort of scratches on the on the dash 
on the door handles, the buttons are all nicely worn. I would say, like credit to BMW, they seem to wear really well. All the switches and buttons and stuff, it all looks really good. Now, like I was saying, I am using this car as a good example of a high mileage car and there is undoubtedly plenty of uh, bad examples. Let me just quickly pull up the spec list. Here we go, so I've got the HPI in front of me. It's obviously HPI clear. Uh, it's got all the usual stuff in the eight speed auto. One former keeper, so I think the previous keeper had it uh, since 2016, and then the one before that would have had it from, from new. So yeah, it's good to see one former keeper. It's got loads of BMW history as well, which is nice to see. I actually bought this car in an auction, by the way. Uh, in auction, a car like this, because it's got high, high mileage, a lot of traders are a bit like, oh, a bit skeptical about buying them, but then, you know, it's a good opportunity to buy uh, if you're a trader that is willing to part with money this type of thing so yeah we bought it and we've been really lucky with it it's a proper nice thing so uh spec that's what i was talking about spec uh so base price in this car was eighty-eight thousand three hundred pounds uh what was it eight years ago uh optional equipment was three thousand seven hundred and thirty five so it's ninety two grand uh including the vat new uh nowadays i think this car is advertised for about 15 16 grand so goes to show how much it's depreciated in that few years. Uh, optional equipment are panoramic glass sunroof, which obviously I just spoke about, automatic air conditioning with four zone control, so I'm guessing that's the, the rear climate that it's got, loudspeaker system, Harman Kardon. Do you know what? Let me just show you something quickly. So many people just seem to not know about this feature. Settings, sounds, right? Go into sounds, right? Logic 7 surround, that little feature there, you turn that off, the sound quality out of these speakers, that should be permanently on. It shouldn't even have that option on this car because it is so good with it on, right? So many people don't know about that feature. It's like every BMW I buy, I get in and I'm like, I wonder if they know that this feature exists and it's it's always off. Maybe it's turned off from factory, but yeah, that is, honestly, if you own a BMW and you've got that feature, do just get in your car and tick that box, yeah? Yeah, mad. Uh, cold weather package, not too sure what that is. Reversing assist camera, 375 quid, that's pretty good. Sun protection glass, uh, that's a bit of a must, I think, just for the, more than anything, for the visuals of the car. I just think cars look better with sun protection glass, 345 pounds. Interior trim in American oak high gloss. I actually really like that. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, I don't know about that, but that's grown on me. Carbon black metallic, obviously that's the bodywork that comes as a free option. Interior trim in American oak high gloss. I don't know why that's on there again. Uh, maybe it's got additional, but that was free. But yeah, good spec, and it is a really nice car. So I think what we need to do now is we'll hit the road, right? I want to talk about a couple more factors about high mileage cars. Also answer why I think high mileage cars are actually all right. And thirdly, we may as well do draggy time, didn't we? Why not? Yeah, let's hit the road. Uh, see, it, we are off in the high mileage BMW X5. Now, uh, a lot of people are going to be wondering why, Calvin, have I decided to upload a Wednesday video this week? So I suppose I just sat here in the X5 this morning, I was driving to work and I was thinking, I need to do a bit more content on this car. This is quite exciting. And the main reason why I haven't uploaded videos on, on a Wednesday for the last two weeks, believe me, it's messing with my OCD a little bit, uh, it's simply because I am mad busy, right? There's some stuff coming up on my channel, uh, stuff that a lot of you lot are gonna be excited about. Uh, I don't really wanna talk about it, I just wanna let you know that I've been positively busy and I am still fully on it, of course. Like, there's no, don't think for one minute that I'm not on it, all right? So, yeah, just expect change in the next few weeks. But that's it, all right? I won't talk no more about that subject. So, uh, it's got a heated steering wheel, by the way, this car, and an electric uh, steering column. Surely that ain't standard features on, uh, maybe it is on the M Sports, I don't know, but that's quite a nice thing. And, uh, yeah, just quite a nice place to be, this car. It's a really nice, nice car inside and uh, I don't know, I do like them. And going back to the, the high mileage subject, which is the whole reason that we're doing this video, is the thing I like about high mileage cars is they are good value for money. Like, I do like these X5 M Sport 3 litre diesels. I think they're a good all-rounder. They look the part, they're good on fuel, they're quite powerful. I mentioned that uh, I was previously, or a couple of weeks ago, I was daily driving a Disco 4, which was also a 3 litre diesel. I jumped in this after driving that, and that felt absolutely gutless. Yeah, considering it's the same size engine. I jumped into this after that, and this feels so much quicker. Like, it's quite a, I'm not gonna say it's fast, but it's quite punchy power. Just what you'd expect from a three liter turbocharged diesel engine, yeah? 
So I do like that about them, but they're a lot of money. They're not a cheap car to buy. And if you are on a bit of a budget, the thing you've got to do is compromise somewhere. Sometimes you'd have to compromise maybe by buying a HPI, um, a by buying a car that's not h clear like Cat S or Cat N or something or you compromise by postman buying one with high mileage now my sort of feeling or my take on high mileage cars is very similar to my my feeling towards categorized cars it's all each their own don't just rule out categorized cars don't just rule out high mileage cars the reason I say that like obviously you're better off going out and buying a brand new car because it's perfect yeah it's not been ever been in a hit it ain't uh, got no issues with it it ain't worn out but it costs money, yeah? The way I grew up is I had to work with whatever I've got. I have to be resourceful. And years ago, I, one of my first sort of nice cars was actually a BMW 320i petrol M Sport. It was a 53 plate, it was actually a pre-facelift. It wasn't the best car in the world, but for me, it was an amazing car for the money. And I bought it at the time because uh, I actually wanted an E46 320 BMW, but I couldn't afford one. But I could afford this one because it had done high mileage, right? And it was a lovely thing. And that is my point, I think. You can buy good cars that have been well looked after for little money, but you do compromise, obviously, with the mileage. But at the same time, you, get, you can get yourself a nice car. And it really is each to their own with each individual car. Some of them are terrible, granted, but others, you get the odd one, is actually quite nice and this is definitely one of them cars right so uh and that is my reason for wanting to do this video on this car now from a car trading point of view uh high mileage cars actually ain't great sellers for many reasons one because it's a risk you know for buyers to buy them they sort of, a lot of people your general mentality is yeah but is it going to go wrong fair enough you know that's a fair fair point it's more likely to go wrong, I think that's fair to say. And secondly, finance companies don't lend on them because, for that reason, they're they're high risk, yeah? So I think they're generally, finance companies won't lend on cars uh, sort of over 100,000 miles. Some will go to as much as 120,000 miles, but beyond that, they literally just say, nah, we ain't, we ain't lending on that car. So that's another reason why they're not great sellers, but there's no, no getting away from the fact that I am always drawn to them because I think I think they're all right. So yeah, let's uh, let's now do draggy times. Yeah, I don't know how well it's going to get on, but it's kind of a standard little thing to throw in in my videos. Why not? Hey, eh? let's throw in a draggy time. Let's get on the 70 mile an hour roads and see how it gets on. Three, two, one. We're off. No smoke out the back. Look at that. 190,000 miles. Not a bit of smoke coming out the back whatsoever under full load. There we go, 70 mile an hour. Now I am expecting this car's gonna come somewhere near the bottom of this, but as ever, I am gonna do a few runs and I'll come back to you in a sec uh, with the quickest run of the lot. And in that run there, I didn't actually have it in sports mode, so I'll try it in sports mode as well, all right? See you in a bit. <laughs> well, we've done it. See that dragon box back in there. Take it out of sports mode. And uh, yeah. It's, uh, I must admit, I felt like I'd be impressed if this beat the BMW 420i Grand Coupe, because that's kind of, it's not, a, it's not a comparable car at all, but it's quite a sporty looking thing. That didn't perform too well, and I can tell you that this did beat that car by a lot, all right? It's a big, heavy car, so you'd think it wouldn't do, but it has done, all right? So this done 20 to 70 mile an hour in, in seven, get it right, Cal? 7.46 seconds, all right? So it's like, a good second quicker uh, than the 420i. Not quite as quick as whatever was above it. I can't remember. I could look at my phone, but doing that whilst on camera would be silly. But yeah, anyway, that ain't what this car's about anyway. I suppose it's a nice luxury family car. I think the summary of the video is, um, are you mad buying a high mileage car? I don't think so. I think you just got to check it out. If you get a good one, like with a small amount of owners, decent history, there's a good chance it could be a very good car. But I think the, the sort of the punchline of this video needs to be if you can afford to buy a brand new car, yeah, go out and buy a bloody brand new car. It will be perfect. But if you're on a bit of a budget and you want to give it large, you need to make compromise. And I think mileage is a good compromise to make. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna leave it as that. 
Thank you very much for watching. If you did like this video, do me a favor, hit the like button. If you're new to my channel, hit subscribe for a new video, definitely every Sunday and on the odd Wednesday. That's all gonna remain back to normal once I um, transition. We'll talk about that later today. So do hit subscribe. Uh, and if you're on Instagram, give me a follow on Instagram at Calvin's Car Diary, all right? And I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Oh, wait, before you go, I want to quickly show you what this car looks like with freshly refurbed wheels, don't I? Let's show you that now quickly. Look at that. It looks a million times better, doesn't it? So the wheels before, they weren't actually done in the correct finish. So we've had them done uh, in a diamond cut face and they're sort of painted silvery gray color on the inner edge there. So yeah, it looks, looks a million times better. It finishes the car off. Uh, so now we can re-photograph it and get it up for sale. In the next episode of Diary of Car Trader, it's another week of my life as a car trader. And yeah, basically we encounter a few problems.